Stylish sci-fi, space travel, adrenaline-pumping action movies, and familiar franchises. Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today I've got the top 10 most popular IMDb-rated movies for you. And remember, these aren't new releases, but the most popular films, some of which have already been released in 2022. And I've got a lot more interesting videos for you, so feel free to subscribe so you don't miss the next episodes. Make yourselves comfortable, and have a great time watching. Everything Everywhere All at Once is the breathtaking adventure of Evelyn, a middle-aged Chinese immigrant who discovers she has access to other universes and lives she could have lived, and now she must save all of existence from an incredible threat. This film is a brilliant display of creativity, humor, and emotion. It successfully combines the genres of action, comedy, science fiction, and musical. With impressive and imaginative visual effects, it embodies the unusual concept of a multi-universe. The film also explores important issues such as identity, self-acceptance, family relationships, immigration, and finding one's place in life, all with great nuance and depth. A particular strength of the film is its cast, especially Michelle Yeoh, who plays arguably the best role of her career, conveying her character's inner struggle and growth through a variety of images and challenges. At the same time, the plot can be confusing and difficult to follow, especially in the third act. Some of the character's dialogue and explanations can slow down the pace and reduce the impact of certain scenes. In addition, the film may easily offend many viewers as it is obviously experimental and unconventional. Everything Everywhere All at Once is a unique and original film that deserves to be seen on the big screen. It is a moving portrait of the power of imagination and the diversity of human experience. Scream 6 is a good old-fashioned thriller that continues the iconic slasher franchise. The film follows the survivors of the Ghostface murders as they leave Woodsboro and start a new life in New York City. But their past haunts them when a new killer appears, targeting them and their friends. This is a sequel that respects the original films and adds new twists and surprises. The film combines humor, suspense and brutality, and explores themes of traumatic experience. Surprisingly, no special attention has been paid to this in the characters so far. There are quite a few fan references, all executed with an understanding of the franchise. The strong cast is also praised, especially the outstanding performance of Courtney Cox as Gail Weathers. The on-screen chemistry between Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega is equally effective. However, the predictability of the plot cannot be avoided. There are also logical gaps, small plot holes that can undermine the credibility of some scenes. Nothing critical, but particularly picky viewers will notice them. As for the metaphors and references, this is a definite plus for fans, but the those who have seen the film by chance may not understand what it is all about. All in all, Scream 6 is a fun and exciting slasher that doesn't forget the previous films and adds new characters and storylines. I'm sure it will appeal to loyal fans and newcomers alike. The Whale, a drama that tells the story of Charlie, a reclusive and obese English teacher who tries to rebuild his relationship with his teenage daughter Ellie. The film is based on a play by Samuel D. Hunter and directed by Darren Aronofsky. The film is a powerful and moving portrait of a man struggling with physical and emotional pain. It explores loneliness, guilt, forgiveness, and redemption, touching on sensitive issues such as obesity, religion, sexuality, and family relationships, all with sufficient realism and sensitivity. Brendan Fraser has done an amazing job of bringing Charlie to life on screen. His performance performance conveys the character's inner turmoil and humanity, despite the massive costume that makes him almost immobile on set. The rest of the cast also show a high level of acting, which is not surprising. For a quality drama, the cast is essential. There's also no denying that the film can easily come across as extremely slow and eerily depressing, with most of the action taking place in Charlie's apartment and focusing on his conversations with visitors. There are also graphically disturbing scenes in the film that show the character's domestic habits and health complications. It is dark and complex. The Whale is a profound and moving film that showcases the talent and courage of Brendan Fraser and Darren Aronofsky. It is a rare cinematic experience that has the chance to touch your heart and soul. That is, of course, if you dare to watch it. Luther, The Fallen Son is a crime drama about John Luther, a brilliant disgraced detective who escapes from prison to track down a serial killer terrorizing London. Based on the BBC television series created by Neil Cross and directed by Jamie Payne, the film is the sequel to the Luther saga that fans have been waiting for. It has all the action, suspense, and unexpected twists that made the series so popular. It also delves deeper into Luther's character and his relationships with former colleagues and enemies. Idris Elba once again shows class in the title role. He gives a 
charismatic performance that captures Luther's determination and intelligence. Cynthia Erivo as Odette Rain, a new ally, looks good in a duet with the main character. Certainly not as cool as Ruth Wilson as Alice, but the alternative is well done. The plot seems unrealistic and implausible at times. One should also be aware that the film is more of a dark and violent action movie than a dynamic detective like the original series. Anyway, the main merit of Luther, The Fallen Son, is that it brings back one of modern television's most iconic detectives and brings his story to a logical conclusion. It is a must-see for fans of Luther and Idris Elba. Cocaine Bear is a comedy thriller about a strange group of cops, criminals, tourists, and teenagers who arrive in the Georgia State Forest where a giant black bear goes on a rampage after accidentally using cocaine and starts a bloody hunt. Do you think the industry has taken a turn and thrash action films are back in fashion? The film is a hilarious and outrageous parody of the true story of a bear who died after eating 40 kilos of cocaine left behind by a smuggler in 1985. The film mixes absurdist humor, brutal violence, and pop culture references, and it's all done at a really fast pace. Cocaine Bear also pokes fun at various stereotypes and cliches of the genre and its typical characters. Unsurprisingly, some viewers may find the plot too silly and ridiculous, especially the bear's behavior. There are rude and even offensive scenes, and there is an overabundance of violence. But all in all, Cocaine Bear is a fun, just plain crazy film that lives up to its message and title. It's a wild ride for fans of black humor that will have fans of the subgenre screaming at the absurdity of the situations. Shazam! Fury of the Gods, a comedy action adventure film about Billy Batson, a teenager who can transform into a superhero by saying the magic word Shazam. The film is a fun and exciting continuation of the Shazam story that fans of the first film will enjoy. It has the same humor, action, and simple family interactions between the characters that made the first film so popular. There are new characters and new problems for Billy and his adoptive family. The special effects are up to par, looking much more natural in my opinion than in the same Black Adam. Like the original, this film is more in line with MCU-type projects in its light tone and colorfulness, and obviously that's what audiences will be fed with James Gunn at the head of the DC Universe. And I know it's a comic book movie, but the plot can come across as too shallow and predictable, especially if you haven't seen the first film. It hasn't reached the point of outright vulgarity yet. After all, Shazam! is a family superhero movie, but the hints are there in some scenes. Shazam! Fury of the Gods is an entertaining and enjoyable film that expands the universe and its characters. Still, the same family-friendly humorous adventure as the first film. All Quiet on the Western Front, war drama directed by Edward Berger, based on the classic novel of the same name by Eric Maria Remarque. The events take place during the First World War. It tells the story of Paul Baumer, a young German soldier who, under the influence of his patriotic propaganda teacher, escapes with his classmates and volunteers to join the army. However, they are soon confronted with the harsh reality of war on the Western Front, where they witness death, suffering, and horror on a daily basis. The film shows the physical and psychological effects of war on Paul and his comrades, and the futility and absurdity of the conflict. The film is a heartbreaking adaptation of the novel, with some new twists and plot features added by the director and co-screenwriters. The film does not shy away from depicting the violence and brutality of war, but above all, it explores themes of friendship, humanity, and survival. Visually, the film looks incredibly impressive, thanks to the cinematography and set design, the suspenseful, unsettling music, and the complete absence of background noise. I don't want to talk about the main actor separately, they all did an impressive job. Worth mentioning is Daniel Bruhl, who plays the small but very important role of Matthias Erzberger, seemingly the only German politician who tried to save lives and sign an armistice. Not a spoiler, this is historical fact. The film is not for the faint of heart. It is full of scenes of graphic violence and bloodshed. It is emotionally draining and offers no hope or redemption. I found it difficult to watch myself, but it is a strong and moving film that conveys the message of the novel in a compelling and respectful way. I am not the least bit surprised that it won four Oscars. Perhaps All Quiet on the Western Front is a must-see film for anyone who shares the values and ideas of humanism. The Banshees of Inisherin is a comedy drama starring Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson as two best friends living on a remote island off the coast of Ireland. The film follows their relationship as it reaches a breaking point when one of them decides to end their friendship, leading to a series of tragicomic events. It is a dark and witty exploration of friendship, loneliness, and revenge with a touch of magic. The film showcases writer-director Martin McDonough's signature style, wry dialogue, absurdist humor, and violent twists. There are also elements of Irish folklore and mythology. The film is also a tribute to the island of Einishmore, where McDonough spent his childhood summers and where the film was shot. The roles are, of course, perfectly cast, led by the performances of Pharrell and Gleason, who have great chemistry and deliver both hilarious and heartbreaking moments of their friendship.
The music is memorable, the nature of the island delightful. The film is not for everyone, containing scenes of crude language, violence, and far from humane treatment of animals. It is also emotionally complex. However, it is a brilliant and original film that balances comedy and drama in a special and unique way. Don't miss it. If you like dark comedies with a special atmosphere, it will make you laugh, cry, and think a lot, sometimes all at the same time. 65. Scott Beck and Brian Wood's sci-fi thriller starring Adam Driver. He plays an astronaut who makes an emergency landing on a mysterious planet where he is hunted by a deadly creature. The film tells the story of his attempts to survive and return home, as well as the mysteries of the planet and his own past. Beck and Woods, known for their work on A Quiet Place and A Quiet Place 2, have once again demonstrated their talent for creating tense and interesting stories with a minimum of dialogue and resources. The film was produced by Sam Raimi, who has a great feel for the horror and fantasy genres. In addition, the film has a fairly simple premise at its core, which allows for full creativity, and a lot of surprises for the audience. Driver in the lead role is not bad, of course, if you can see him on screen at all. In addition, the design and VFX of the creatures in the film are very good, and the music composition is exciting. Of course, the film is not without its flaws, such as pacing problems, plot holes, and cliches. Some elements have been borrowed from other sci-fi films. Nevertheless, 65 is an intriguing and exciting film that promises to provide viewers with many exciting and interesting moments. 65 will appeal to most fans of sci-fi thrillers with an unusual setting. In my opinion, it does not deserve such a low rating. John Wick 4 is a crime action film directed by Chad Stahelski and starring Keanu Reeves as Wick, the legendary assassin. The film continues the saga of Wick, who becomes the target of the high table after breaking its rules and killing one of its members. The film expands the world of John Wick, introducing new locations, characters, and factions, as well as bringing back familiar faces and plot elements. We are told how Wick will find a way to defeat the high table and gain his freedom. There are clashes with new enemies, encounters with powerful allies and old friends. The film both exciting action sequences directed by Stahelski and his team of stuntmen. The film features various styles of martial arts, gunplay, knife fights, car chases, and even horseback riding. In fact, everything that has made the franchise so popular. At the same time, Reeves himself performs most of the tricks and fights with enviable agility and skill. The new John Wick contains scenes of graphic violence and bloodshed. Not that this should surprise anyone, but what if this review is seen by those who missed the previous three films and decide to jump into the franchise from the fourth? The film is also not original in the sense that it follows the same formula and structure as all the previous films. It's not very deep or meaningful, with the maximum attention being paid to style. John Wick 4 is a must-see for anyone who loves sharp thrillers. It is an intriguing and gripping film that delivers on all the trailer's promises of a non-stop and spectacular action movie. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and click the buttons below the player. And see you in the next issue. Bye.